Hello Internet! Welcome to the very first tutorial on HTML5 game development. So first let's look at why HTML5? Why is it better than Flash for developing games? So as we know, mobile games are becoming more and more popular day by day. And and most of the mobile devices doesn't support Flash. So the popular Flash game developers are changing from Flash to HTML5 since most of the mobile device doesn't support Flash. And in HTML5 you just have to create the game once and you can easily port the game to Android, iOS, Windows and many other OSs like Firefox OS and Tizen. And a third reason is because JavaScript will be used for programming HTML5 games. JavaScript is a programming language that is really simple and it has lots of similarities to ActionScript 3. So it will be easy for Flash developers to start developing HTML5 games. And the final reason is because HTML5 games are really simple to make. Unlike Unity and Coco Studio, you don't have to set up the development tools like NDK and SDK for creating HTML5 games. Next, I want to talk about Phaser. We will be using Phaser for developing our HTML5 games. Phaser is a game engine that makes HTML5 game development easier. For example, Phaser does all the scaling work for us, so you don't have to worry about scaling when porting your game onto mobile devices. So if you were not using Phaser, you would have to scale each and every object of the game individually, which would be really hard. So for that reason, we would be using Phaser for developing our game. Even though HTML5 is a better game development tool than Flash, I'm not gonna stop uploading Flash tutorials because I just love Flash and it's actually the first game development tool that I learned. So I'm, I'm not gonna stop uploading Flash tutorials. So, so let's start making our game. We are going to start building our game from the basic phaser framework which is nothing but the folder over here. I'll put a link to download this folder in the description. If you open this folder, you can see three files. The first file is index.html file, which is uh, responsible for displaying our game. The second file is main.js file, which will actually contain the code of our game. And the third file is phaser.min.js file which actually contains the source of the phaser we not we are not going to be dealing with that so the first thing you have to do is you have to make a copy of this folder phaser framework i'm going to rename this as basic game Now the text editor that I will be using for creating the game will be brackets. Brackets is a free text editor and more importantly it is easy to test our game in brackets. So to open our game in brackets all you have to do is just drag the folder basic game onto brackets. Now you will be able to see all the three files of the basic game folder inside brackets. You can simply double click on the file to open it. So first let's look at index.html file. So this is just basically a basic HTML structure. If you 
if you are not familiar with HTML then you just don't have to memorize this because this is co actually going to be the same for most of the games we make but however the, there are a few tags that you need to understand the first one is title tag this title tag is used to give title for our game so the title for our game right now is basic game if I want to change the title of my game then I can simply go ahead and change the name over here and the next important tag is script tag what the script tag is used to link JavaScript files onto HTML files so you can see over here we are actually linking the other two files in the folder that is face.min.js file and main.js file to our HTML file and the next important tag is the div tag the div tag is the tag inside which our game is going to be displayed and the div tag is going to have an ID which we will talk about later next let's look at the main.js file so this is going to be the main file of our game and we are going to write our game logic inside this file there are a few things inside this file which is very important and which you have to understand since we are using Phaser Game Engine to create our game, the first thing that we need to do is initialize Phaser Game Engine. So this function initializes Phaser Game Engine. So basically this function has four parameters. The first parameter is the width of the game. Right now the width is 400. The second parameter is height of the game. So right now the height is 600 and third parameter is the phaser rendering, rendering mode you don't have to bother about that right now for now let it be phaser.canvas and the fourth parameter is actually the ID of the div that we made in index.html file now if you go to index.html file we can see that the ID of the div we made was game div and it's the same thing here the fourth parameter now for testing the game all you have to do is just click on this live preview button in brackets and the game will automatically open up in Google Chrome so here you see this is our game right now now so what if you are not using brackets if you directly open the index.html file the game might not work it might work right now but as you add more sprites to your games the game might not work so this is because the game actually needs a server for running properly so that is the reason why we use brackets uh, and the live preview option of the brackets so another way of testing the game is to directly open the index.html file in Mozilla Firefox for some reason when I open up the game in Mozilla Firefox directly the game actually works and it doesn't work in other browsers like Google Chrome and Internet Explorer because it doesn't have a server so if you don't have brackets one way of doing this is to directly open up the index.html file in Mozilla, Mozilla browser and if you don't have brackets and if you don't have Firefox browser then one thing that you can do is you can just set up servers in your computer 
for example you can use software like WAMP or SAMP for setting up servers in your computer so once again for testing the game you have three options the first one is to use the live preview button of the brackets and this is the reason why I recommend brackets to everyone watching this video and in case if you don't have brackets you can actually open up the game directly in Mozilla Firefox browser and in case you don't have that then you can set up a server like WAMP or SAMP in your computer. Now I'm going to be testing our game using the live preview option of the brackets. So now if you look at the game all you see is just a black rectangle. This is actually the place in which our game is going to be displayed. Since we haven't done anything right now all you see is just this black screen. But one thing you have to notice is that the dimension of this black rectangle is actually the dimension that you have specified over here. That is its width is actually 400 and its height is actually 600. Now if I go ahead and change those values then you can see that the size of the rectangle actually changes. Now I'm just going to go ahead and change it back to 400, 600. So this is really important. By changing these values you can actually change the height and width of your game. One really important thing to re remember is that if you happen to change the value over here or any piece of the code you actually have to save the main.js before actually testing it in the browser. So you can actually save it by using Control S or you can just go to file and select save so make it a habit to save the file you have edited before actually testing it now if I just change this to 800 and if I don't save it and if I test it you can see that the output doesn't change now if I just hit control S and now if I go ahead and change it, you can see that the bit actually changes. So make it a habit to save the file you're working on before testing it. So now we have a basic stage for a game. And you also learn how to change the dimension of the stage. So this will actually be the starting point of all the games that we are going to make and also since we have a stage now in the next tutorial we'll look at how to add images onto the stage and how to move and rotate the image and after that we'll just try to make a basic game like Flappy Bird in HTML5